All right, so today we are here with David Hagerman, who is the steward for the Raymond Lowy estate. And for those of you that might not know, he is also the son-in-law of Raymond Lowy. And so he is here with us today to talk about uh, Mr. Lowy's life and his career and all his accomplishments. So thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you, Lindsay, for such a warm and cordial invitation. Um, Raymond had a 70-year career, and he was very prolific. Uh, he did everything from lipsticks to locomotives. <laughs> so we're going to just try to hit the highlights, if possible. He was born in 1893 in Paris to an affluent family. Uh, went to good schools, but uh, after he returned from World War I, uh, his parents had passed from a Spanish pandemic and everything was gone and he had to follow his brothers, George and Max, to America with $40 and a tailored French uniform. So that's a little background. Um, Raymond Loy is known as the father of an industrial design or the father of streamlining for all the famous locomotives he did for the Pennsylvania Railroad. He was the first designer to grace the cover of Time magazine. Um, life felt Mr. Loy, along with Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, was one of the most 100 most significant Americans of the 20th century. Um, he designed everything. Uh, Cosmopolitan said Loy affected the daily life of more Americans than any other man of his lifetime. Um, his most famous design these days is Air Force One that was originally commissioned by Jack Kennedy and uh, Jackie O. We call her Jackie O because she was always a member of the Lowy family over the many years. Um, he did Air Force One. Uh, wherever you go in the world, it's the most prominent American design icon in the world. Uh, to the people within the Beltway that say that Air Force One was designed by a Frenchman, I would like to show Mr. Loy's 1937 uh, letter of naturalization uh, from the United States Department of America. And uh, he, this, of all his accomplishments, he was most proud of his American citizenship. Um, Jack Kennedy and Raymond, they became wonderful friends. Raymond designed uh, Jack Kennedy's PT boat that he commanded in the Pacific. Um, Lowy, uh, very well known for his streamlined locomotives. Um, the first one was the GG1, it ran for 50 years. Uh, he had a T1 streamliner that was a very uh, functional uh, workhorse that ran a long time. He did the Broadway Limited, uh, a K4. Uh, that's the one you always see in the movies. Uh, his sexy locomotive was the S1 that was one of the highlights of the 39 World's Fair. They had it on a track and it ran continuously. Um, Loy became good friends with everyone over the years. He, he set up the rocket port at the um, World's Fair and uh, Walt Disney would come by and take notes and they became lifelong friends. And uh, Loy used to have an office out in Hollywood just uh, for one client, Howard Hughes. But uh, he knew everyone at one time. Um, at the fair, he did the uh, bus shuttles for um, Greyhound. He eventually did the Finnick Cruisers for Greyhound. Um, he did the old Silver Sides for Greyhound. And whenever you see a vintage movie, you'll see a Lowy bus. Um, 
Lloyd did wonderful things for Coca-Cola. They had a relationship that probably lasted close to 40 years. At the 39 World's Fair, he set up the first soda fountain at the World's Fair with the first Lloyd Coke dispenser. Now the famous Lloyd Coke dispenser was done in 47 by Dole. And that's the one you always see in the Norman Rockwell uh, prints. Um, it's very 50s, uh, people love the, the Dole Coke dispenser, soda dispenser, they call, it's shaped like a marine engine head. Um, he did the bottles, he did the slimline bottles in the 60s. He took off Coca-Cola and he put Coke on it because we asked for a Coke, graphic customer recognition. Um, he did wonderful logos. Um, we'll talk about maybe Nabisco, Quaker. We'll talk about Shell, BP, Exxon. Uh, one time a kind lady asked him, why did you uh, put a double X on, X on Exxon? And he said, my dear, you've already answered your question. But he did more logos than anyone. Um, he is known for um, introducing the profession of industrial design in 1930, 1929, along with Belgetti's, Teague, and Dreyfus. Um, the 34 coal spot, Raymond, Raymond Loy's 34 coal spot refrigerator is the first example of industrial design applied to a mass produced product in America. And the beauty of it was during the depression, Loy's new designs brought people back into the showroom and Sears uh, sales went through the roof. And as a result, he was a contractor to Sears for over 20 years. Um, probably his most important accomplishment um, was his seven years working for NASA. Um, after he developed a good uh, track record with Kennedy and the Kennedy administration, they suggested, well, Jack Kennedy wanted to go to the moon. So he enlisted Raymond as a habitability consultant to NASA. And um, not only did he, he set up the first environmental interior standards, the first interior standards for extended space travel. Now we go to the moon in three days, but he set up something for maybe 18 months, maybe for 36 months. You know, if we want to go to Mars today, we figure it's about 18 months, but everyone that goes to Mars is going back and look at, looking at Raymond Loy's seven year study for NASA. Um, Raymond loves speed. He loves speed more than anything. Um, he actually graduated from the Carroll Shelby Driving School. Um, he was the resident, well, he was the independent designer for Studebaker from 1937 to 1955. He had a studio right outside the Studebaker plant. He was an independent contractor and um, he did all the trucks and all the cars from 37 to 55. And uh, when you had a Studebaker, you were, you had something special. You didn't have a Ford or a Chevy, you had a Studebaker. So you, you were very design conscious. Um, he was a, he was a rebel. Uh, Detroit hated him, but the people that really loved cars, the car people, adored him. He's a member of the Automotive Hall of Fame. Um, Studebaker, when they were in their very last years, they asked Raymond Loy to come back in 62 to try to save them. And he came up with the most beautiful sports car, touring car, the Avanti. Um, Studebaker only lasted two more years because they had so many Avanti orders, they just couldn't fill them. Um, but when they closed their doors in 64, um, the Avanti was built for another 40 years by uh, 
several uh, small independent uh, motor companies. So his icon, the Avadi, which you see in a lot of movies, um, was continued continued to be built for 40 years. And the Avadi Club, uh, the Avadi historians are very influential. Uh, they're one of the major motor clubs in America. Um, going back and looking at Raymond, uh, he was the real McCoy. He was the real deal, as we, we say. Uh, he was a certified World War I hero. Um, he went in as an he went into the infantry. He followed his brothers, Max and George. He dropped out of college, went to war. Um, due to his electrical background, he ran all the wires over inner enemy lines. He set up all the telegraph communications, uh, between the, um, command post. Uh, he was awarded actually two French medals of honor and a, the coveted Croix de Guerre. Um, he was wounded in battle. He spent the last three months of his military tour in an American hospital where he uh, developed a great affinity for the kind of Americans that cared for him. And, uh, he learned the uh, rudimentary of ability to of the Engli English language, which he picked up very quickly. Um, when the war was over, his parents had passed from the Spanish flu e epidemic, similar to what we have now. So he um, went to the U.S. in 1919 and. Uh, joined his brother George in Manhattan, who was a physician, and he turned down a job at Westinghouse. He got a job. He had a letter of introduction to Condé Nast. He showed them his portfolio, and he was immediately hired and worked for Condé Nast as the uh, top fashion illustrator in New York, the best paid, but that still wasn't a lot of money back then, so he was the biggest moonlighter in New York. Um, he knew how to sell, how to draw. He did lighting and costumes for Flo Zegfeld. They became very close friends. He did moonlighting for Pierce Aero automobiles. He did some beautiful uh, Art Deco watches for Elgin Watch Company. He he was making a hundred grand a year during the depression and in the thirties and it allowed him to summer in uh, Barcelona, Paris. Um, his dear old friend, Jean Cocteau, a Renaissance, Renaissance man of France, introduced him to Gertrude Stein and all her loyal members of the lost generation. Uh, he shared many a drink with Jean Moreau, uh, Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, and their work really influenced him for the next 50 years. Uh, he talked, uh, he had long conversations with Scott Fitzgerald. He boxed with Hemingway, uh, but Gertrude Stein uh, really did his editing and for a long time, and he had two bestsellers, Never Leave Well Enough Alone in Industrial Design. And they're both textbooks in American colleges and design universities today. Um, when, when I sit back and look at everything, and he just had a wonderful life. He had homes from San Tropez to Paris to Monte Carlo. He had a chateau that was built by Henry the Fourth. He had homes in Hollywood, Park Avenue, Miami. He was always on the road traveling, learning new cultures, learning new styles. He had 200 people. He had to get work to keep his people working. He made his payroll every Friday, very conscious, conscientious man, uh, wonderful husband, uh, great father. Um, I look at, I look back at him now, um, you know, how is he looked at today? 
uh, people look at his design philosophy, the most advanced yet acceptable. It was a marriage of form and function. Um, um, it still influences everything that's designed today. Um, Atlantic Magazine it reintroduced Maya two years ago and uh, uh, as the clearinghouse for Raymond Loy, uh, Mr. Loy does keep us busy. Um, Raymond was a very astute man. He was an academic. He lectured at many of the prestigious universities. He actually um, founded the industrial design department at USC in LA after World War II, which is now under the wing of the architectural department. But he was their guest um, traveling professor for many years, um, brought him great satisfaction. Uh, my late wife, Lawrence, she graduated from USC. She was a journalist and she helped Raymond uh, on many projects in his later years. Um, Raymond looked, worked with, he loved America, his beloved adopted country. And he worked for, he crossed the aisle. He used to have many a drink in Washington with Tip O'Neill. Uh, he would cross the aisle. He worked with Jack Kennedy on projects. He worked with Richard Nixon on projects. His last major project was working with the Russian government. Uh, Nixon wanted to ease Cold War tensions. So uh, Nixon enlisted Raymond and his studio to build cars, uh, fabricated homes, uh, appliances, white goods to improve the Russian standard of living to uh, introduce them to capitalism and um, East tensions, world peace, and uh, Raymond uh, was able to cross the aisle. And I, I think that's maybe in today's world, uh, along with Mega, what he would be best uh, remembered. But uh, he always said, to understand my designs, you have to understand my lifestyle. But he kept traveling learned cultures, he worked with everyone, he never judged, he was a kind man, he was a most generous philanthropist, and he always tried to get back to his profession. So uh, I just feel privileged to be the steward of the estate, and uh, as my late wife wished, just to introduce Raymond and his design philosophy and his high standards to a new generation. And I just want to thank you for your kind time and uh, the privilege to uh, do this introduction to, to Mr. Loy today. And uh, thank you. Thank you. This was wonderful. He definitely had a huge, huge career and did so much. So Thank you for sharing just even a little little part of that with us. And I think people will find it very interesting. And thank you again. Thank you.